Hey everybody, welcome back. Uh, this is part eight of the LS swap into the 1976 C3 Corvette behind me. In the last video, we went ahead to remove the blown 350 small block out of the car. If you're new to the channel, go ahead and click on the playlist. It'll get you up to speed as far as what's transpired up to this point. Um, so it's been about two or three weeks uh, since the last video on this. And uh, with Christmas and the holidays, you know, time is on a short supply, just like anybody else. Uh, so I've been making small bits of progress on the car and mainly what I've been doing is I've been you know cleaning up the engine bay I actually pressure washed the uh, car inside the garage because the uh, the transmission is supported by a jack so there's really no way to roll it back out of the garage um, so made a mess in the garage but you know what that's fine so but in the meantime I've ordered some parts I ordered uh, the wiring harness flex plate and the fuel pump so while we go over to the bench, I'll show you what I ordered and I'll give you an explanation of what I ordered and uh, hope it helps anybody out that's uh, tackling a project like this on their own. So let's go to the bench and let's get to work. All right, so this is the fuel pump I'm using. It's actually, uh, it's a Holly drop-in unit that's designed to use the existing tank uh, from the Corvette. Um, so this is part number one, two, dash 312 it's applicable to the 75 and 77 corvette they also make one from the 78 to 81 and they also make one from the 68 to 74 so it pretty much covers all the bases right so this pump was 400 bucks on black friday and in the kit i see you're gonna get new gasket hardware gonna give you the pigtail which which is gonna plug into the pump right there and then if we look at the pump you, you're gonna see it right there it's regulated to 58 PSI at 255 liters per hour, which is the stock spec from a, uh, for a 5.3. And then you also have the float level in the tank. So on the back side or the top side, of the pump is really pretty simple. It's a returnless system. So you have the vent line on the left-hand side, and then you have a single supply line right there, right? So it's pretty simple. So what's nice about this fuel pump, it allows you to use the existing tank in the car. You don't have to change it out. And you may say, well, what, how are you gonna deal with uh, starvation issues when the, the car is below a core of a tank or you're going around a corner? And those are excellent questions. So what Holly has advised is they include this guy right here. And you, and some people will say, well, that's just a fuel sock, but it's also a hydromat, right? And so basically what a hydromat is, it's a one-way valve. Think of it as a sponge where fuel is allowed in, but it's not allowed to escape. And per Holly, this is gonna uh, eliminate any starvation issues in the tank. Because if you look at the uh, the pump, the way this thing is, is uh, orientated, the pump is gonna sit right on the bottom of the tank and when the sock is attached to it, it's gonna be literally right on the bottom of the tank. So with the fuel placement and the hydromat, we should have no issues with starvation on it. That's what Holly says, we're gonna give it a shot. All right, so the next part I bought was a new flex plate, right? And some people will tell you, well, you don't need to do that. All you have to do is just adapt the existing flex plate to the torque converter from the Turbo 350, right? And yes, theoretically, you can do that. Uh, and the reason why you have to modify the existing flex plate is because the bolt pattern on the Turbo 350 torque converter is different than like a 4L60 and a 4L80. Uh, it's actually, it's, it's narrower or it's further apart. Can't remember which it is. So what you would have to do is you would have to modify the flex plate by taking a die grinder or some type of cutting tool and, and basically you're in, introducing slop into these holes that attach to the, the uh, torque converter. I think that's an awful idea, <laughs> to be perfectly honest with you guys, uh, because you gotta remember, uh, this is the only thing that's is, uh, attaching the uh, the engine to the trans, right? And it's, on, it's being held in those three locations, right? And you gotta remember, this flex plate is spinning Anywhere from zero to what, 8,100 RPM or whatever the LS uh, spins at, All right? And the last thing I want to do is elongate the holes on the torque converter well, on the flex plate just so I can save 90 bucks. Because you got to remember, right, if you elongate those holes, right, 
all you're doing is you're increasing slop into it and it's going to vibrate and eventually you may have a a catastrophic failure to the point where you introduce so much slop into that hole you could shear that bolt off and then you may blow out the the torque converter or who knows you may actually destroy the flex plate and then the last thing i want is uh, having a a flywheel or a flex plate spinning at 5500 rpm 35 whatever and have a catastrophic failure so spend the 90 bucks it's it's short money with all things considered do it right do it once so we got this flex plate we're going to be attaching it to the to the uh, the ls and we'll be one step closer into getting the ls dropped into the all right so this is the uh one of the last parts i've ordered if you're familiar with ls swaps bp automotive is a u.s based company they make all their harnesses in-house they have a very high level of quality that they uh, instill. They have great customer service and support after the sale, right? So if you go on Facebook or on the internet and look into Google or whatever and ask, you know, what harness should I use for my LS swap? There is a ton of discussion and you're going to see opinions left and right. But at the end of the day, it all depends on your budget and what your build is, right? So my build is, it's a stock 5.3 out of an O2 Yukon, other than the LS6 intake, it's the stock cam, the stock heads, and the stock manifolds for exhaust. Um, I'm not going crazy on this. This car is just gonna be a daily driver. So depending on your build and what your intentions are, is gonna dictate what you're gonna be using for an ECU and a harness, right? So if you're on a super tight budget, you can go ahead and take the, uh, the, the harness out of the donor vehicle, strip it down, depin it, and modify it to whatever you need to do. If you're, if you're one step above that, you can go on Amazon and eBay and spend like 100 bucks, 150 bucks on a harness that's out there that is maybe good, maybe bad. I don't know. I've never used one, so I really can't say if they're good or bad. But, and then you can go on the uh, the higher end, right? You can go after a Holley Terminator or a Holley Dominator, you know, and spend 1,500 to grand, right? If you have no budget, you can go ahead and buy a Holtec and really go crazy. It all depends on, on what your build is. For me, right, I thought about reworking the, the existing harness. Ultimately, I decided I wasn't going to do that. I was just going to put that thing to the side. I'm going to use the existing uh, stock ECU. But I made the decision to buy the harness from BP Automotive. And again, what's nice about their harnesses, uh, that it comes with great documentation. It already comes wired with the fuse box and the relay. Everything is labeled where it's going to go and everything is terminated correctly and it uses automotive grade wiring. You drop the, the engine in the car, you make the connections, you know, you get your ECU flashed, disable that, <clears throat> and you're, you're, you're pretty much set to go, assuming that you're running a stock engine, right? And basically, again, that's my intention here. I'm just making a daily driver. I'm not going completely crazy. As of now, <laughs> we'll see what happens down the road. But for me, even though the harness came with the engine, I wasn't the one that pulled it. So I have no idea if it's good or not. I'm sure it's fine. But at the end of the day, uh, the, the harness is probably the most important thing that you're going to buy on the car because it controls everything. It's basically the, the, the central nervous system of the swap. If the ECU can't talk through to the engine through the harness, you're going to be chasing ghosts. You may think that you have bad sensors or whatever it is because of a bad harness, right? So, yeah, it was 500 bucks, but again, making the right investment can save you time and parts later on down the road. I hope that clarifies things. And again, some people are say, "Oh, that's 500 bucks. That's a lot of money." But if you take the whole thing to perspective, I actually have more money and wheels and tires on that car than the harness. <laughs> so, and the harness is what's gonna make the car actually go down the road, not the wheels and tires. So 
think about that and take that into effect, right? Spend your money wisely and make sure that you're getting the, the best part that you can, whether it's something from BP Automotive or Flanders LS swaps, or there's, you know, uh, PSI Automotive, I think there's another, that's another company. So again, spend your money wisely on the harness, right? If you are a guru of electronics and wiring and everything else, go ahead, roll the dice, go buy a harness for 120 bucks or 90 bucks off of eBay and go for it. And I, I wish you luck. For me, the goal is to have this car up and running in six months. I don't want to be uh, dicking around with a subjective harness and saying, why did I buy this thing? And, and then just had to spend more money on parts and chasing it and then have it be an abandoned project in the garage. All right, so that's pretty much where we're at. Today is Friday, December 29th. Uh, the goal is to put the engine up on the uh, cherry picker tomorrow, uh, swap out the flex plate, and then get it actually in the car, made up to the trans and sitting on the engine mounts. So again, you know, we're not going to make any attempt to start it or roll it over because the fuel pump isn't going to be uh, hooked up and accessories or anything like that. The goal is to have the engine in the car by the end of Christmas break and before I go back to work. So at this point, if there's any questions or concerns or, or anything that I've talked about, go ahead and leave me a comment. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. Uh, if you made it this far, I do thank you for watching. I hope everybody has had a great Christmas and a good New Year's. So with that being said, I'll talk to you later and have a good day. See ya.